want to make sort of mutually beneficial deals and, and actually, sorry, negotiate things that work well for everyone. And there are other people who just want to scam you. And it can take a bit of time to, to figure out who's who. Um, and I've, I've had a bit of both. I'm actually really happy with the deal that I struck with another developer where they're redeveloping my game Fishy Fishy for WiiWare. Um, I think we're both really happy with the terms and it's, it's going on great. But other people, they, they basically just wanted to take all my stuff and make me do some work and not give me any money. Um, Little Ship Planet is the game that was shit. Um, this is a little project I made. It wasn't an attempt to rag on Media Molecule and Little Big Planet. I think these guys do fantastic work. Uh, there's a completely different reason for the name. This was really my lesson in it's okay to fail. So I made this game and it sucked. And it just sank to the bottom of the internet like a stone and was never spoken of again. Which is fine, because there was really no damage or harm that came from it. So, you know, try new things and don't worry if they suck. GZ 2009 uh, was also pretty awesome. This time around I got invited to speak at the experimental gameplay sessions. Um, I was presenting Rom Check Fail and it was great because it gave me five minutes to, to really talk about gameplay variation, which is something that I find fascinating. Um, and I could keep talking about it, but I'm not going to tell you what this is about. So this was great. It gave me that platform to rant about stuff. Um, it was also a bit of validation uh, for my efforts, which is great. And um, it's a really kind of, it, it's a fun vibe. It's a good session. It's something people get really excited about. Usually people really pick stuff up. I think it's cool and experimental. And they have a good time. With uh, <laughs> so I'm super psyched again. I've just been to a conference. Uh, at this point, I didn't even make it home. I made it back to the shitty little desk in my hotel room and I wrote down this. Um, I'm not going to go through it exactly because it doesn't actually make a lot of sense, but this is a direct copy of what I stand down into a text file. And this is me making a decision to go full-time independent, quit my job, and just make a go of this stuff. Um, the highlights of it are basically, I realized that in measure of awesomeness, the worst case scenario if I quit my job was about the same as the worst case scenario if I didn't. And if I quit my job, the worst case scenario was slightly less likely. Um, but the best case scenario if I quit my job was incredible. And so that was a, a really quick, simple argument that kind of started to convince me that it was a good idea. Um, also, the one thing that really kept me over the edge was just that, plain and simple, you only live once. If you're really excited about going and doing something, then just go and do it. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to spend your whole life regretting never actually trying something, even if it turns out it sucks. So motivations for this, some people, they want to quit their job because they want to be their own boss, and they want to do their own thing, and they want to be in control, that's not really me. Um, I asked a bunch of people for quotes and thoughts about what to do in this talk, and Cactus here said that I should talk about not making indie games for profit, but to explore the medium and expand the scope of what can be achieved when making a game. Um, if your heart skipped a beat then, it's okay. It pretty much happens to everyone, it's natural. Cactus is just that kind of guy. Um, I do want to explore gameplay ideas and things like that, but one day I'd also like to play a helicopter, so I'm playing some <laughs> um, And of course I did not make this decision entirely myself. This is something that I discussed a lot with my partner, because this isn't just something that it, uh, would affect me, this is something that would affect her a lot. Uh, she was really supportive of it, so I went ahead and did it. Uh, also, my original plan had been to just use my own savings and finance sort of a year of life myself, but she volunteered that we uh, combine finances and that's been working on that. Really nice so, yeah. um, resignation. So, usually when people leave 2K Australia, they write these long, passionate emails about how the team is really awesome, um, really talented, they do great things, and it's, it's sad to leave. And honestly, I think that's true. These guys are fucking incredible. Um, it's like six of them there, but I would have said it anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, writing things like that is not really me, but I wanted to express something, so I thought it would be fun to make a little game. And like, shortly into this game, you get the words, I quit, and a big flashing banner. Um, but then it goes on to explain my reasons and things, so it wasn't like a kick in the balls or anything. Um, what was interesting about this is that I did that mostly for the team, but just a little bit for myself. Um, because it had occurred to me that if you want a lot of cheap, tacky publicity, then you should just do something stupid publicly. <laughs> um, 
because it works. Uh, so anyway, this thing went onto the internet, uh, went a little bit viral, and I ended up with a call from like Sydney Morning Herald and things doing interviews. It was great. Um, great way to start my new stuff. And I've got to recommend, if you ever want to do independent work, get some mug shots taken, all right? Have some publicity photos, because when you get the call to bring in the photo, you have to do it quickly, and you don't want this published in the newspaper. All right? That's just not cool. Um, this slide doesn't fit anywhere in the presentation, so I just jammed it in here. I just think it's kind of cool that the correlation, well, the complete lack of correlation between the time I'm spending on projects and how they're actually received, and the fact that they're all three years. Uh, last week at work, I was freaking out, basically. I had so much energy to go and do my own things, but I couldn't do them yet because, you know, basic ownership issues and things like that. So, what I recommend, if you do ever do quit your job to do something like this, make a list of all the things that are of no commercial value whatsoever and go do them. Because you burn up that energy and once you do become full-time indie, you just can't justify doing shit that's just fun. Um, okay. Uh, Mid-2009, I have quit my job. How's it going? Still freaking out. You start off with a huge burst of energy. Um, you're finally living the dream, you're doing what you want to do, and you need to make money fast or else you're going to end up in the gutter. A uh, strong piece of advice I got from a friend who had done similar things, what don't burn out. It's apparently very, very easy just to throw so much of yourself and your energy into it that you end up wasting several months afterwards when you're just an emotional wreck. So instead, I went back to the wonders of routine. Um, which I guess works twice for that slide. Let's not talk about that. Um, so, very simple. My partner gets up, goes to work. That's when I get up and go to work. When she comes home, that's when I stop working. It works wonderful. Uh, this has to fit in here somewhere. It's the boring slide. Everybody recommends when you start your own business that you talk to an accountant. And it didn't seem great for me, but maybe I was talking to the wrong accountant. Sorry if you're watching. Um, Register for an ABN, get a trading name, think about registering for the GST. Uh, my understanding is you don't necessarily need to do this if you don't expect to earn a lot of money. And there's a threshold which I think is around $75,000. Uh, regardless, collect the country codes and locations of people who are buying your stuff. Because if you do need to charge the GST later, well, it'll come out of your money, but you still need to know how many of them are. So I have like 100 people who bought my stuff, no idea where they're from, and that could really screw me later. Uh, consider incorporation, you might want to protect your assets, you might not. It's up to you. Talk to someone, probably an accountant, about that. <laughs> Project selection. Um, I'm really inspired by a lot of the experimental prototype kind of development production techniques people use often in independent games, where they just make little things in little three week or one week blocks, chuck them out, and if anything catches, then they go, yeah, okay, I'm going to make that into a big game. So I, I basically just sorted all the ideas I had, because ideas of which you quit your job. Um, and, and found something that really fit the model, something I could scale right back down into a complete experience of game that was small enough to be a prototype, but then scale back up into something so. So that was uh, Captain Forever. Um, platform selection, this kid's kid. Uh, platform selection, I don't really have a marketing budget or anything, and I need to be able to get stuff in front of people. So I need something that is like really just going to get people's attention. So uh, anything browser-based is an obvious choice if you kid. Make something that's kind of a, a downloadable PC thing. You're going to see like between 10 and 1 percent of the views and, and downloads as you would if you just built something that plays straight in the browser. So it's a pretty obvious from there. Also, I don't really like gatekeepers um, to stay with the Ghostbusters theme. So and you get screwed around a lot if you're trying to get a slot on a digital distribution channel and you're going to have to fight for that, then you have to do lot checks. If you're working on proprietary hardware, then you have to get you know, dev status and you have to buy the hardware. Um, it's just so much crap involved with that. And then you're beholden to somebody who could one day just say, okay, we're changing our pricing system. Or, you know, you've got your business model around our client. All of a sudden, we're going to switch the revenues and you only get 30%. You only do that was. Um, I didn't want to go for that, so I went for Flash. Um, my slight deviation from the normal make a prototype, throw it out, have lots of people play it thing was to not throw it out, have lots of people play it. Uh, the reason for that was basically when people experience something I made for the first time, I want them to have a little buy now button next to it. Um, whereas with the general freeware prototype thing, you know, you get huge publicity, everybody plays a game, and then they wait a couple of years and probably place some awful knockoff clones until your product is ready. Um, 
I don't really like that. So I'm 